testimonies of my experience with the K. Uh, it's hard to believe this is number four, Fred. Number four we've been together. And then times I've come up to be with Metropolitan, we, our, our paths has crossed, we work together. That video clip that you showed four years ago, it was great except for that 10 second segment. You could have left that part out. I wish you'd have left that part out. But anyway, that night was crazy. That night was beyond, that night was stupid. You remember that, Freddie? Look, this is how crazy it was. We had drug dealers giving their hearts to the Lord. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. We had people that laid their actual drugs on the altar. It was so crazy that even after the service, you, I, I won't forget this one. You, you, you remember the guy's name? I don't remember the guy's name out on the street. But you know what I'm talking about, right? Was it her? I don't know, something similar. Anyway, the service is done. People have left. You know, Freddie and I were white. We ready to go. They come get us. Pastor, you got to come outside. Freddie, you got to come outside. We go outside, and there's a dude they have been praying for. Now, my boy was, he was tipsy. He was beyond tipsy, man. He, he was about, he, he was weaving and wobbling, and he almost fell down. You remember? I remember and, and we got to talking with him, and, and Freddie and I just prayed with the guy, and, and God began to move on him and sobered him up on the street corner of Baltimore. Yeah. The dude's weeping. Now, I love authentic, raw people of Jesus. I love it. I love it, Pastor, because we're on the sidewalk. The dude looks at me, Pastor, and says, Preacher, I don't know what you've done to me, but you f me up. But he said the word, you know. <laughs> And I'm like, whoo, this is funny. And, and he just didn't do it that one time. He done it like three more times. And I'm like, Lord, if you don't fix this, I'm going to bust out laughing because I'm losing all spirituality right now. And, but that's just the power of God. That was a crazy night. Crazy night. Man, we've had some great experiences. Last year, you come back from your honeymoon. Yeah. You remember the word? There it is. Yep. One year later, right? One year later, there's the promise. Some crazy stuff has happened here at the cave, and it's exciting to be a part of it. Come on, give the Lord a hand for what he's done. This is all what the Lord has done. We just get to have fun with it. We just get to be a part of it. That's what's awesome. Now, look, this is number seven. Seven is the year of completion, right? Yes, sir. Yes, Seven is the year of completion. Yes, That's when everything is completed. Everything's perfect. The work. The struggle. The hardship. It's completed. So I'm excited about where God is going to take you and what God's going to do with the cave. I'm just going to buy this for a minute. Tonight's going to be a little different. I had to write down my sermon real quick. I don't know what it is about Baltimore, but I can't get past no cards and post-it notes. It, it's just something about the city. Now, look, I've only got li limited time, all right? And if you know me, you know that's a joke right there. That, that's a joke right there. But, look, I, I'm Pastor Aaron. I go by PA. I come all the way from the Hampton Roads area of Virginia to 757. Uh, I'm in Suffolk. And if you know, anybody know about the 757? Oh, come on, my 757 people, yeah! Look, some of the greatest athletes have come out of the 757. Now, all my family and friends down in Charlotte, North Carolina, they offended now because I'm originally from Charlotte, but the 757 is home now. And so to all my family and friends and guests that are watching online, welcome to the cave. It's about to get crazy in here. Look, travel plans. Travel plan. Freddie talked about what's your destination, right? Now, it's getting ready to be the summertime. School's letting out. Anybody having school's out? Yes, sir. Yes, That's sir. it? Yes, sir. All right, I'm writing your superintendent. You're going to year-round school. Anybody excited to be out of school? Yeah. You people, I hope on Facebook y'all just hit hearts all over that place. 
They could better lit up with some hearts. That's all I'm saying. But school's about to be out, and everybody's making plans. Like, my mom is calling me. And, and like, son, what's the kids' plan for the summer? I don't know, mom. I, I haven't thought that far through. I got to take this thing day by day. But look, there's going to come a point you're going to love them phone calls. I'm just saying. And because I got three at the house, I'm like, when do you want to come get them? Take all three, baby. Take all three. And, and look, so my kids are making plans. You know, they're going to go down to the grandparents. They're going to go here. They're going to go there. Some people are going out of the country. How many of y'all going out of the country over the summer? Look, I am losing weight. I can fit in a duffel bag, but it's got to be kind of big. You can put me in a duffel bag, and I'll go with you, okay? And, and so people are making plans. They're going to different places. Maybe they're going out of state. Maybe they're going out of the country. They're making these plans. But here's, here's the thing you've got to realize. What's your destination? You can't answer where you're going until you have first determined within yourself. Now think about this. You can't answer where you're going until you first determine within yourself. Now, a lot of you may be getting, uh, graduating this year, getting to where you're going to graduate, or uh, graduated from college or processing. Where are you going? What's your destination? And until you know, you can't answer that. Well, I want to be this. I want to be that. Look, I want to be skinny, eating a greasy cheeseburger, sipping on some southern sweet tea. But look, you don't always get what you want, right? You can do that, but you're going to look like me. See, you can have dreams, you can have ambitions, but the thing is, until you know where you want to go, you're going to end up at a destination called the shoulda, coulda, woulda. I should have done this. I could have been this. I would have done that. Well, you know what? If I exercise a little bit more, if I put a little more effort into it, I could be playing in the NBA Finals right now. The <laughs> white boys may not be able to jump, but boy, we can't shoot the lights out. That's all I'm saying, baby. We can just drain them. But see, you got to determine within yourself, where do I want to go? What's my destination? Where do I want to end up in five years, 10 years, 20, 30, 40, 50? You don't want to end up in the destination of shoulda, coulda, woulda. Because when you end up in the destination of shoulda, coulda, woulda, you now have regrets. You get in a place where you start regretting decisions you make and you, and you become resentful and resentfulness leads to bitterness. Bitterness is spiritual cancer, man. It eats away at you. It destroys you slowly. And you become sour and you become bitter. And, and then you start uh, uh, hating on others and you start taking it out on others. Where do you want to go? What's your destination? Well, Richard, you don't know where I come from. You don't know my story. Guess what? You don't know mine either. You don't know where I come from either. Every book has a story. And you can't base the book off the cover because I've seen some books, man, they have some pretty covers, but they were boring. And I've seen some books that look like they're about to fall apart. And you ever, Pastor, turn the pages and the dust comes up and you get that kind of like ancient smell? Like, Jesus checked that out of the library kind of smell. <laughs> and man, those were some of the best stories that I've ever read in my life. See, you write your own story. Nobody writes it for you. You may not be able to control everything that happens to you, but you can't control how you react to everything that happens to you. You don't have to be a statistic. You write your own story. Now, look, I, I just want to put something out here. I'm not trying to get political. And, and I don't want to hear, you know, anything about it. That despite what your views and morals are, you take our last president, President Obama. Statistically, he should have never been the most powerful man in the world. Raised by a single mother, 
and a lot of times by his grandparents. Daddy wasn't in the picture. Now, I, I'm not trying to get political or anything like that. That's not what I'm doing. What I'm trying to show you is he didn't came in to the statistics. He wrote his own story. He determined within himself, this is where I want to go. And so he did what he had to do to get there. Does that make sense? Statistically, I shouldn't be here in front of you. But I made a determination within my life to get there. Now, here's another thing. you got to know where you want to go, but when it comes to the destination, what's this destination going to look like? Now, there's a story in the Bible. It's in the first part of the Bible, what we call the Old Testament. That's from Genesis to Malachi, if you're not familiar with the Bible. And, and, and there's a guy in the Bible named Abraham. Like he, he's, he's an important dude in the Old Testament. He, he, he's the father of nations, okay? He's the one that the promise comes through. Well, Abraham had his nephew living with him named Lot. And, and things just got to a point where they could no longer live together. You know, there, there was conflict. Abraham was, you know, kind of well off. Lot's kind of well off. There's confrontation. And so they come to a point and they're standing on, at a mountain. They said, look, we got to separate because there's too much issue. can't answer the question of where you want to go to you determine within yourself. And Abraham said, Lot, you choose which side you want to go on. Now, one side looked good. Like, it had the green grass. Like, like it's that turf grass. You know, it's got them nice ponds. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Got the little yachts over there and the nice grass and the, the, the little country club. And on the other side, it's just a hood. It's just a ghetto. Look, one side nice, one side is like, you don't want to live over there. The ratings are not good for that school district. You know, we don't want to move there. Over here, you got champagne glass. Over here, you got Dixie cups. That, that's just the difference. And so Lot, look, he's like, man, I want to go where it's nice. So I'm determining myself to go there. So he went there, and Abraham went here. But here's the thing, what looked good didn't turn out to be good. You ever went on a trip that looked good? Like the travel agencies put up some nice pictures, and this place looks uh, 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 amazing, man. This place is awesome. And you get there, and there's like cockroaches taking your bags to the room. <laughs> Like, what in the world? And there's rats that are so big, I'm like waiting on the Ninja Turtles to pop out with them. That's my, you know, like, this ain't, and you go to the desk and like, my phone don't look like this. See, you just can't go off of looks, because some things look good, but they're really not. But see, Abraham went to where it didn't look good, and it turned out he was blessed. It turned out to be good. You know why? You know why? Go ahead. You can clap. It's all right. I'm going to talk back, preacher. You can clap. You can hoop. You can holler. You can run and laugh. It's all good. Just let it be in the Holy Ghost. If it ain't in the Holy Ghost, we got people to take you out. I can't tell you where to at, though. Look, y'all scared now. But look at this. The grass is only greener in two places. The grass is only green in two places. In two places only. Where you water it and above a septic tank. <laughs> so Abraham was determined, I'm going to go here and work it. And his destination became good. And Lot went for what was easy. And guess what? He had to deal with all the... Now nah, we in church. We can't go there. Let, let me move. Y'all know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, you do. Get your halo, halo off. What's in the septic tank? Boo-boo. Okay, let's move on. So the first thing is, what's your destination? Here's the second thing. Who are you traveling with? Okay. Okay. See, you can't answer the, the question where you're going until you first determine within yourself where I want to end up. But here's the next thing you've got to look at. Who are you traveling with? Who you travel with determines your experience and your memories. 
You know, who's your ride and die? Preach. Y'all some churchy people, man. I don't even get this churchy on Sundays. <laughs> come on, they, they had, what the real, hey, I'm just going to come to you. They, they had like they ain't never, you know, ride and die. And all that. We good, okay. We, we, we good. And, and, but look, who you travel with determines your experience. You ever went on a vacation with that crazy cousin? Like, you don't even want to see them at the reunion. You don't even acknowledge that they're your family, but they, they tell everybody, that's my cousin. That's my cousin on my mama's daddy's second side. That's my, that's my cousin. And you're like, I ain't related to them. They were adopted, so we, we, we really ain't good. They, my uncle felt, felt bad for him. You know. But you ever went on that trip with that one person that just made that trip horrible? Like they ruined it? Like they was obnoxious? They were aggravating? They complained about everything? They took everything? My God. Come on, we're preaching now. We're preaching now. Let's be honest. Yeah, because who you travel with determines the experience and the memories you have of it. Because here's the truth. You're the sum of the five people you hang out with. Yes. Yes. You are the sum of the five people you hang out the most with. So if you want to know why you have the attitude that you have, check the five people you hang out the most with. You want to know why your life is in the situation it is, look at the five people you hang out with because iron can only sharpen iron. And if the iron you're rubbing up against is dull, your life dull. Right? You can only go as high as those around you are taking you. And if nobody in your circle is pushing you or challenging you to have a better life, a better experience, you might want to check out your circle. You're going to talk like the five people that are around you. Thank you. Life and death and the power of tongue. Everything follows the sound that's being made. Wow. Now I'm trying to be careful not to get on kingdom because you know I love preaching kingdom. Amen. But those you travel with determine your experience and memory of that. And so if those around you are always complaining yeah. and griping and negative, everything follows the sound that is made. So that's why your experience has been negative Horrible, and you don't even want to remember it. That's why you got drunk because you didn't. Oh, never mind. That, that's not my bad. My bad. I was going to have a good time, but I got high. I'm sorry. That's old school. The spirit of old school just hit me. I'm sorry. You're going to have to edit that part. But you know it's true. You were planning to have a good time, but you're like, man, forget this. Look, those are BC days. They before Christ. They don't even count no more. That's BC. Yeah. I can't say no more of her. <laughs> Who are you traveling with? See, if that experience, if that destination is going to be great, if these are memories that we're wanting to pull back, I mean, that's what these pictures are. They're memories. That we can come and look and like, man, I remember that moment, these videos. Man, I remember that moment when God did this and God did that. See, those are the memories that we want to have and we have them because of those we traveled with. See, if you travel with the people that are always going to the popular place, you're going to be disappointed. Yeah, yeah. Who are you traveling with? Here's the, here's the next thing I want you to look at. What route are you taking? Because, see, anytime you travel, you, you, you got to figure out which way you're going to go. You know, when I was coming up here, I, I was looking at my GPS. I was like, whoo, 95 is out of the question. <laughs> well, look, I am a firm believer. From Fredericksburg to D.C., that is hell on earth. Yeah. That's hell. Yeah. Satan. 
Washington is over the road construction. He is directing the traffic. That is the pit of hell itself. I believe it. And I'm looking at my GPS and I'm like, it's red. Red is fire. Red is hell. Can't go that way. So I had to come up the back way. What, 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 what route are you taking? What route are you taking? Because here's the reality. It may be the quickest way, but it doesn't mean it's the best way. It might be the quickest way, like, you can get on the interstate, baby, and just let it go. Like, I got a little Matchbox car. It, it looks like a little Matchbox car. Like, like a little toy. A little fun toy, man. My wife don't like to ride with me because I, I just go. And I'm like, Jesus, be a fish. You know, anybody ever seen Fred Hammond? I'm like, Jesus, be a fish, baby. Blind the police officers. Hide my car. Let angels just surround me right now, Lord. Hallelujah. Because I love my car, man. That car is fun. It's a little fast. He said, I ain't giving my car out. I ain't giving a description of it because they're going to be looking for me. And, and, but I, I love a little five-speed, man. That thing is low. It goes in and out of traffic. We can get on it. And I know my wife's like looking over, and I'm like, just read your book. <laughs> Pray. Check Facebook because I'm gone, you know. Now, the interstate, you can do that because yeah. it's wide. It's big, you know, and, and, and it's got a faster speed. But look, here's the thing we got to realize. It may be the quickest way, but it doesn't mean it's the best way. Now, I can look at this route and, and I've determined, hey, here's the destination I want to get to. And I've examined who I've traveled with, but look, this way may be the best, the quickest way, but it ain't the best way. How you get to where you're going? What route are you taking? Is it a route that hurts people, steps on people? Is it the fast, quick way? Or is it the way God is called? Now see, I, being from North Carolina down in the Charlotte area, there, there's some country areas. Now I, I love a country road now. Got them turns and all. I, I remember... When my wife was pregnant with our oldest daughter, she went past Duke. Did she go past Duke? <laughs> Bless the Lord. And, and <laughs> so she went past Duke, like, and on these country roads, man, there's big turns, hills. And I had me a little S10 pickup truck. That thing sat low. Had a big old engine in it. Boy, and I knew these roads. And so, you know, when you know the country roads, you know what you can and can't do. And, man, I went flying on that thing because, like, this baby had to pop out. <laughs> like it just ain't gonna come out. So I'm trying to raise my wife's stress level because that's what a good husband does. We just elevate the stress level. We just get the blood pressure up. That's all. Amen. Amen. I, all the wives should have said amen. Y'all were disappointed me tonight. <laughs> Roxanne didn't have the baby. She'd have done a victory lap. I'm just saying. And anyway, so I'm trying to raise the stress level so the baby can come right. So I'm flying down this road. We're going around the curb, the back of the truck, kicking out. And I knew, oh, this is the hill. Well, you ever got a hill and, like, you hit it just right and it comes down the stomach drop? Like, you know, oh, this is the hill. Woo! You know, you raise your hands up like you're on a roller coaster. Woo! And, and we were coming on that hill and I was like, why? And we hit it right and, but there was no baby. I was like, man, I failed. And, and but look, now the country roads, like, they, they're fun. Sometimes they're the best way. They help to avoid the traffic jams. They help to avoid the cluster. What route are you taking? See, I need you to remember all this because I'm going to do something a little bit different tonight. Number four. What options are you taking? What's your options? Now, see, when we go on trips, some of the options you got to look at is what kind of luggage you're going to take. Now, see, when it comes to trips, I'm horrible. Mm. Like, if I'm leaving tomorrow at 9 a.m., guess what time I'm packing? 
8.30 a.m., that's right, 8.30, I am packing this suitcase up and I'm ready to go with you. Amen, brother. Bear with me. Well, she tried to help me this last time and, and I was like, oh, the show's back on. And so I left, I went to watch TV and she get mad at me. But see, there's options. Am I going to pack early or am I going to wait? Are you going to hit your moment or are you going to miss your moment? What luggage are you going to take? Now, like, I, I fold things up. I try to condense everything into one bag because I don't like to carry stuff. But there's some people, man, they going on an overnight trip. And they got, like, two rolling luggages. And they got, like, three bags draping off around the neck and, and, and on the shoulders. And I don't know what the weather's going to be. I might feel this outfit. I might want to wear that one. But these shoes look good with that one. But those shoes look good with this one. But if it's raining, I... What look at you taking? <laughs> See, sometimes you know where you want to go, and you may have the right people around you, and you're like, this is the best route, but I've got too much slowing me up. Yeah. I can't get to my destination because I'm tired of everything I'm carrying. So what's the option on the luggage? Another thing you got to look at is documentation, man. You go out of the country, you better have your right documentation. Oh, yeah. But guess what? You ain't coming back. You ain't coming back. So the thing is, we're all traveling. We're all headed to a destination, but do we have a proper ID? Do we have a proper documentation? And, and, and when you go on trips, you better get your hygiene stuff, right? Talk. Yeah, come on. Ain't nobody want to sit beside anybody's thing. You know what I'm saying? Stink so bad, secret done told on them. I mean, that's bad. Come on, let's watch up. And look, all you little middle school boys, axe is not a bath. Wash yourself with soap and water. You ever seen them boys? They have been sweating, they stain, they get the axe bottle. And buddy, they use a half a can of like it's the glory of God just coming down. Just the glory cloud. Shekinah glory coming down. It don't work. It's, it smells worse. Okay? Here's a better option. Just get a brown paper bag and say your mama put tuna in there and you forgot about it. You know, you got a tuna sandwich. You forgot all about it. But see, these are options you got to look at. What option are you doing? Are, are you getting clean? Or are you cleaning yourself? Or are you just trying to cover it up? Oh. What are you carrying? Are, are you overloaded? Or you got an easy load? Do you have the right documentation? Do you have the right ID? Or have you forgotten it? Oh. Here's another thing. With this option you take, you better make the right one. Because it could change your life. Now, back in the day, there was a movie called The Matrix. Yeah. You might have heard of The Matrix. Oh, yeah. yeah, Neo, he's all right. That's about as far as I can go, but my back will go out. I had to get the mic over to Freddie, and he just got to finish because I'm, I'm laid out in spirit. Well, Neo had an option. If he takes this pill, and if he gets everything, takes this pill, and he enters reality. And see, here's the thing. Whatever option you take, it better be the right option. Because your world will completely change after that point. Now what's the point in all of this, P.A.? It's very simple. I want to read to you Matthew chapter 7. And it's going to be verse 13 and verse 14. And Jesus says this. Go in through the narrow gate. Because the gate to hell is wide. And the road that leads to it is easy. There are many who travel it. But the gate to life is narrow. And the way that leads to it is hard. And there are few people who find it. Here's the reality tonight. Everyone is traveling on a path to a destination. Everybody is on a path to a destination. Where are you going? 
Now, I know in our culture today, this, we really don't want to hear these types of messages and sermons. We like this stuff that is positive and makes you feel good. And, and God loves us no matter what. And, and, and He forgives everything. And that, that's true. But here's the reality. We're all on a path to a destination. And God does love us so much that He wants us not to go to one destination, but to a destination that is with Him forever. He loves you so much that He's actually trying to put up a roadblock and He set up a detour so you wouldn't stay on that path, but you would get on the right path. See, the two destinations that really matter it's not Fiji, the Bahamas, the islands, Europe. It's none of that. Those places are awesome. And if anybody wants to see, send me there, God bless you. I'll be glad to let you. I'll be glad to let you. But there's only two destinations that really matter. That's heaven. And that's heaven. And the reality is, these destinations are so important that Christ talked about the latter destination, hell, more than he ever talked about heaven. Because he realized the severity of that destination. That, that's a destination that while it looks good, the ad looks great. And it's made out to be a wonderful place. But when you get there, you find out that it's not what you thought it was going to be. And so Christ loves us so much that he set up roadblocks and detour signs so that we wouldn't be disappointed, but we could go to the destination of heaven where life is forevermore. The destination of heaven is this. No more sickness. Think about that. Think about the countless diseases in this world. Whether they're curable or non-curable. No more sickness. No more death. There's a lot of people that have died. Some died way too young. I'll be honest with you. I had to do a graveside service of a child that was born at seven months. Premature. I'll never try to get her face out of my mind. And I've done services of people a lot more seasoned. But no more sickness, no more death, no more heartache, no more disappointment, no more rejection, no more abandonment, no more being forgot about. No more sickness, no more heartache, no more death. In a place that is so much of a paradise, nothing on earth can compare. There's a lot of beautiful places on earth, and nothing compares to the beauty of heaven. See, there's two destinations, and where are you going? Now, everybody say, well, look, I'm going to heaven. I'm going with God. I hate to say this, but that's not true. Well, preacher, you can't say that because we're all children of God. That's not true either. That's unbiblical. Let me prove it to you. Jesus said, red letters. He told a group of people, he said, you are of your father. Beelzebub, the father of all lies. For all God's children, then why did he say to those people, you're of your father? Secondly, the Bible teaches us that we have been adopted into the family of God through Christ. Now look, Ashley is an adopted daughter of mine. And if we didn't say it, you probably could never, you would never know that because of the relationship. Now I've got three kids that are my biological daughters. Or two daughters, one son. 
Great job. Look, I hope my son doesn't hear that. <laughs> but here's the thing. I can't adopt them. They're already my children. It's impossible to adopt my own kids. Does that make sense? So I know we all want to go to heaven, but the reality is we're not all on that road. We're not all on that path. And I know in our culture, it, it says that all ways lead to heaven. You know, they're pretty much all talking about the same thing. So all these paths are leading to heaven. Whether you take 95, 695, come up 301, come on 7. You, you're going to get to Baltimore. Well, that may be true to Baltimore, but that's not true to heaven. Because Jesus said, once again, red letters, I am the way, Amen. the truth, and the light. No man coming to the Father but by me. So unless you go through Jesus, you on the wrong road. You just took the wrong route, and, and you need your GPS to recalculate your route. Out to God, there's only one. And here's another point, and, and I'm going to start bringing this all together. Ashley, if you want to come. As he set up a roadblock. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You know what that's saying? That God loved us so much, he put up a roadblock. Because he knew there's a cliff just down the road. He knew there was destruction at the end of that path. He knew there was eternal separation. And the Father said, I don't want you to go that way. I don't want you to be rejected. I don't want you to be abandoned. I don't want you to be disappointed. I'm setting up a roadblock because I love you so much that I'm going to give you another path. I'm going to give you another route to take. Detour at the cross detour at Calvary and come to a destination that you won't be disappointed. You won't be let down. 